5. Say we have 3x plus 12 divided by 3, and we need to simplify. First thought may be to cross out the 3s, and we're left with x plus 12, right? Nope. Instead, the 3 in the denominator needs to divide into both parts of the numerator. So we can split up the fraction and make it look like this. 3x over 3 plus 12 over 3. Now the 3s here will cancel. We get x. 12 divided by 3 is 4. x plus 4. 4. If we have 7 minus 2, parentheses x minus 3, you're probably thinking to distribute the 2 into the parentheses. So it may look like 7 minus 2x minus 6. Combine like terms, that would be negative 2x. 7 minus 6 would be a positive 1 plus 1. But that's not right. Because we're subtracting the coefficient, we need to distribute the negative along with the 2 into the parentheses. So now that looks like 7 minus 2x. This time, negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6. Combine like terms, negative 2x plus 13. 3. Say we have x squared equals 16. Seems straightforward. We take the square root of both sides, and x equals 4, right? Almost. When we take the square root of a number, we get both the positive and the negative values. So x doesn't equal just 4, but it equals plus or minus 4. 2. Say we have x plus 5 squared. Are you thinking to distribute the square into both parts, giving us x squared plus 25? It's close, but we're missing another term. Squaring something means to multiply times itself, so it might be simpler to just write out x plus 5 twice. And now realize that we have to use FOIL. We'll multiply the first terms, the outer terms, the inner terms, and the last. x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. Five, 5 times x is another 5x. And then finally, 5 times 5 is 25. We can combine the like terms and get the right answer, x squared plus 10x plus 25. 1. Negative 3 squared equals 9, right? Nope. Why? Because of order of operations. Written like this, that's the same as negative 1 times 3 times 3, which would equal negative 9. However, if we had negative 3 in parentheses and then squared, it would equal 9. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to avoid future math mistakes so you can ace your next exam.